Hello and welcome to news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Balfet. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa today issued Royal Decree Number 45 of 2021, designating the Telecommunications Regularity Authority, the TRA, as the administrative authority concerned with Decree Law Number 54 of 2018 with respect to the Electronic Communications and Transactions Law. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today sent a congratulatory cable to the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on UAE's success in operating the first commercial nuclear power reactor in the Arab world at Baraka Nuclear Plant. In the cable, His Royal Highness underlined UAE's successful strides in furthering development across the region and wished the UAE greater prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has delegated the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to head the Bahrain delegation to Serbia, where His Highness met with President Alexander Vucic along with various Serbian officials. His Highness discussed the bilateral ties and the ways in which they can be further developed in all fields. His Highness expressed pride in heading the high level delegation to Serbia and praised the bilateral ties which he said represent his majesty and his royal highness's keenness on further developing them in all fields in the interest of both countries and peoples he expressed thanks and appreciation to the serbian president for his hospitality and wished serbia further progress and prosperity his Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa departed Serbia where he was bid farewell by the President and various officials. His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation for the President's hospitality and affirmed the importance of the visit to further bolster the bilateral ties in the interests of the two countries, wishing Serbia further progress and prosperity. Upon an invitation from the Serbian President Aleksandar Vucic, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended a military parade which was held in the military Serbian airport. His Highness witnessed several military shows conducted by units of the Serbian army. He also toured the Serbian manufactured military equipment and was briefed about the advanced weaponry. He praised the high professional comp competencies of the Serbian army, which reflect presence. President Fucic's keen interest and follow-up. His Highness said that Serbia boasts as an established military equipment that is manufactured locally, which confirms the privilege, standing and high capabilities of those in charge of manufacturing military weaponry. He wished Serbia further development across all fields.
A representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs is Hana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Serbian President Alexander Vucic toured the capital Belgrade on the sidelines of His Highness's official visit to Serbia. His Highness viewed the economic and tourism sites in the Serbian capital as well as heritage aspects of urban landmarks. He expressed admiration of the development strides witnessed by Serbia and its capital, which confirmed President Vucic's keenness on promoting sustainable developments in his country and provide all means for progress progress and prosperity. He wished Serbia further progress across all fields. Under the auspices of the first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zahana Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the concluding ceremony of the third Khalifa bin Hamad competition for innovation in artificial intelligence was held today. The competition was organized by Bahrain Polytechnic in partnership with the media office of Zahana Sheikh Khalid and the Information and E-Government Authority, in addition to Microsoft and Al Mu'ayyad Computers Middle East. His Highness stated that the competition is an extension of the direct of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to further develop the educational sector as well as the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He praised the third edition of the competition despite the exceptional circumstances imposed by the coronavirus pandemic. He emphasized support to further develop education to introduce new technologies which would be employed to make more achievements. He also praised the efforts exerted by Bahrain Polytechnic in partnership with Microsoft and Al Mu'ayyad Computers Middle East to prepare this edition of the competition. His Highness thanks the sponsors of the event and congratulated the winners of the competition. He wished the remaining participants success in future editions. His Highness handed the awards to the top three participants and then toured the exhibition and viewed the winning project. For his part, the acting CEO of Bahrain Polytechnic and president of the Higher Organizing Committee, Sheikh Ali bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, thanked His Highness for his continuous support to Bahrain Polytechnic technique. The Representatives Council held its weekly session yesterday, headed by its speaker Fawzi Zainal. On behalf of the members, Zainal expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his royal directives and his keenness on providing decent living standards to all citizens. She also underscored His Majesty's protection and support of fishermen's rights in light of the damages inflicted upon them by Qatari practices. She also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for doubling the value of social security benefits and disability pensions. On the occasion of the National Day of Conscience, which the UN has adopted upon the initiative of the latest Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the councils recalled the initiatives of the late prince and his humanitarian contributions. The chairman of the Bahrain Red Crescent Society and president of the 45th session of the Organization of Arab Red Crescent and Red Cross Societies, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, delivered a speech during the opening session of the meeting of the organization held remotely, where Bahrain assumed the presidency of the current session. Sheikh Khalid affirmed that the kingdom has a long legacy and accumulated experience in managing humanitarian and relief work. He stressed the efforts made by the society to continue its role locally, 
regionally and internationally by working with its partners and counterparts to alleviate these sufferings due to wars, conflicts or disasters and its endeavor to reduce the repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic. He highlighted the society is honored to chair the current session, affirming that it will continue to work according to the benevolent humanitarian goals that the Arab organization aspires to achieve, which will be positively reflected in developing humanitarian work and supporting relief work. The first meeting of the Political Coordination Committee emanating from the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council was held yesterday, which is co chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa and the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud. The meeting was held jointly by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Saudi Arabia, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan al Saud, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, with the participation of members of the committee from both sides. Dr. Zayani delivered a speech in which he expressed great pleasure at the convening of the first meeting of the Political Coordination Committee, confirming the joint aspiration of the two brotherly countries and their desire to deepen relations between them, following the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. He added that last November witnessed positive outcomes through the signing of the protocol, amending the level of the presidency of the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council to be co-chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince, which embodies the extent of the common interest and eagerness to achieve the desired goals. The Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed that the first meeting of the Political Coordination Committee confirms the consolidation of the approach adopted by the leaders of the two countries towards devoting bilateral cooperation in all fields, including political cooperation. He also expressed his satisfaction with the positive outcomes reached in this committee, he expressed hope to accomplish all that was agreed upon to reach constructive results, looking forward to holding the work of the second meeting of the committee in Riyadh. The Vice President of the Republic of India, Vakaya Naidu, received the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, in New Delhi on the occasion of his official visit to the Republic of India to head the Kingdom's delegation in the meeting of Bahrain India High Joint Commission. The Indian Vice President welcomed the Foreign Minister praising bilateral cooperation and their development on all levels. The Vice President thanked Bahrain for hosting a large Indian community, praising the care and attention paid by His Majesty the King, especially in in light of the pandemic and praise the directives of His Majesty and the efforts made by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Foreign Minister conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the President of India, the Vice President and the Prime Minister. The Minister praised the bilateral ties in various fields wishing India and the continued development, progress and prosperity. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, arrived in India to lead the Bahraini delegation at the third meeting of the Joint Higher Committee, which will be held tomorrow. Minister Zayani was received by the Ministry's Under Secretary for Gulf Affairs, the Minister of Bahrain in New Delhi, Abdurrahman bin Mohammed Al Gaoud, the Ambassador of India to Bahrain, Piyush Sorbastava, and senior officials from the Indian Ministry and Foreign Affairs. The Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Al Mu'ayyad, chaired the 43rd meeting of the Ministers of Youth and Sports in the GCC countries, which was held virtually. The Minister welcomed the attendees and conveyed the regards of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and the President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as his wishes that the meeting will help in achieving the aspirations of the leadership of the GCC countries. The meeting discussed a number of matters of common interest and approved the initiative to empower the youth of the future, the initiative to designate an annual day for the youth along with the recommendations of the technical committee and various programs and activities which will be organized by the GCC ministries. The attendees also approved cooperation efforts in the field with the international parties along with the golden record which records the achievements of Gulf athletes. 
The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities announced the Kingdom's participation in the Dubai Expo 2020 and the attendance of its President and the Commissioner General of the Bahrain Wing, Sheikh Hamay bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. Sheikh Hamay said that the Expo represents an important opportunity to bolster world culture and that Bahrain's participation comes as an extension of its rich historical and cultural heritage and as a part of its efforts towards sustainable development. The president of the Asian Football Confederation, the AFC, and FIFA First Deputy Chairman Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa chaired the seventh meeting of the AFC's executive office, which is hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain. The meeting was attended by FIFA's president Gianna Infantino, members of the AFC's executive office, and senior officials of the executive management of the Continental Federation. Sheikh Salman welcomed the members, noting that holding this meeting in person reflects the AFC keenness to move forward, lasting its stability and continuing success, highlighting the efforts made by the AFC's executive office. For his part, the FIFA president expressed thanks and appreciation to Sheikh Salman for inviting him to attend the meeting, hailing Bahrain's keenness to host continental and international sports events and forums. The AFC's executive office discussed many topics related to supporting national federations, marketing Asian championships, in addition to the administrative and legal arrangements for holding the 31st General Assembly meeting. The President of Bahrain Football Federation, the BFA, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, received the Secretary General of the Asian Football Confederation, Windsor John, and his accompanying delegation on the occasion of his visit to the Kingdom. The meeting was attended by BFA's Deputy President for Technical Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the BFA's Deputy President for Administrative and Financial Affairs, Ali bin Ahmed Al Bu'ainin, as well as the Secretary General of the BFA, Ibrahim Al Bu'ainin. The Federation President welcomed the Asian and Football Confederation Secretary General and conveyed to him the greetings of the Federation's Board of Directors. The two sides exchanged talks on the latest developments of football in the region and the Asian continent. Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa praised the efforts of the Asian Football Confederation led by its president and FIFA Vice President Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa. The Kingdom of Bahrain's cabinet amended its press printing and publishing law that includes the abolition of jailing journalists and the addition of a major section regarding digital media. The cabinet also approved a memorandum regarding the amendments of some provisions of the law to regulate press printing and publishing. To speak more about the impact of such decisions, we are joined on the phone by the president of Journalist Association, Ms. Ahdiya Ahmed. Hello, Ms. Ahdiya. It's very good to have you here with us today. Could you you tell us about the new decisions regarding the press printing and publishing law and how it further reinforces the freedom of expression in Bahrain, especially for media personnel. Of course, thank you very much for this great uh, uh, question and I'd like to first extend my gratitude and appreciation to His Majesty our beloved King, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and uh, gratitude goes to His, His Highness uh, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, our Prime Minister and our Crown Prince, and uh, the Cabinet approving amendments to the 2002 press law is a huge move, a huge step forward. If it reflects anything, it reflects that uh, the state is concerned about, uh, about the status of journalism in Bahrain. Uh, the state believes that journalism is the fourth state and believes that journalists have a very positive role uh, to play in the society. Journalists are the voice of people. Journalists also play a major role in monitoring the work of the government and of this different entities. These amendments, if you may allow me, will also assure journalists that all their rights are protected. In a country where we have 600 registered journalists at the Bahrain Journalist Association, where Bahrainis and non-Bahrainis all have equal rights. This is a country that appreciates the press. Um, I'd like to add one more thing, that in every occasion we realize that His Majesty the King 
expresses uh, appreciation and thanks journalists for their efforts. Any achievement Bahrain achieved, we see that the journalists are given a gratitude. Today, they are being given assurance that they can perform their national duties and be protected by the law. The digital uh, media, of course, has been changing a lot during the past 19 years, and uh, uh, the, the, the country's uh, approach, the cabinet's approval of changing and amending the 2002 law reflects its belief that we need to be in line with international changes that are happening all around the world. I'd also like to add that uh, many of the uh, issues that we raised as Bahrain Journalist Association as a civil society have been taken into consideration by the cabinet. And this also shows that the government, uh, the government looks at civil society as major partners. And I'd like to congratulate all my colleagues, the journalists, for the trust and confidence that they are being given by the amendments being made to the 2002 law. Indeed, the president of the Bahrain Journalists Association, Ahdi Ahmed, thank you very much for joining us. It was an honor. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus announced updated COVID-19 responses starting from Eid al-Fitr following the presentation of updated findings and data to the Government Executive Committee. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus announced additional responses to be implemented starting from the first day of Eid al-Fitr holiday. These include restricting some indoor services to those who are 14 days post their second dose of an approved COVID-19 vaccination, those who have recovered from the virus and those below the age of 18 accompanied by a vaccinated parent or guardian. The vaccination certificates are to be presented using the Be Aware application. The following indoor services will require presentation of vaccination certificates. Indoor dining services, indoor gymnasiums, indoor swimming pools, cinemas, spas, indoor children's play leisure centers, indoor events and conferences, halls, fan attendance at sporting events. The task force underscored the importance of abiding by health and social distancing guidelines Guidelines, while all outdoor dining in cafes and restaurants, gyms and sports stadiums, swimming pool, playgrounds, leisure and entertainment centers and cinemas will be permitted for all. With regard to PCR tests for those arriving to the Kingdom of Bahrain, these will no longer be required for those who are vaccinated or those who have recovered from the virus where vaccination certificates can be presented via the Be Aware application starting from the first day of Eid al-Fitr holiday. All decisions will remain subject to periodic review in a manner that preserves the health and safety of all. The task force headed by the chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, emphasized the kingdom's commitment to continue intensifying efforts to combat COVID-19 and noted the importance of everyone supporting these efforts and the kingdom's frontline workers by carefully following all health and social distancing precautionary measures as a matter of social and national responsibility. The task force highlighted that the marked increase in cases is due to complacency at social gatherings, underscoring the importance of registering to be vaccinated in these social gatherings and following all health and precautionary measures. The Ministry of Health affirmed that there are no waiting lists for the Russian vaccine and called on those who are interested to sign on electronically. And added, it added that those who register will receive an SMS to specify the time and place of the vaccination process. The Ministry expressed appreciation for the cooperation of the citizens in the process and affirmed the importance of safeguarding their safety. It affirmed that the vaccine is safe and effective following trials that showed effectiveness of 91.6%. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 539,956 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 316,370 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. 
The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached, reached 10,141 with 920 recoveries, 1,020 registered new cases and two deaths. 345 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 643 are contacts of active cases and 32 are travel-related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. Thank you.